In the last year, we've seen home prices in Austin decrease about 10 percent, which is the largest decline of any major U.S. city. Within the Austin metro, there are some areas where prices have declined even more than that. Now, this might seem like great news if you think about buying a house, but the question I want to help you answer today is, are these prices still too high? Well, let's start by breaking down the housing affordability formula. Economists are going to use median price and averages, and that's helpful if you're talking about the overall housing market. But that doesn't help if you're talking about your individual situation. Now, the good news is the components that make up this affordability formula are the same whether we're talking about the overall U.S. market, the Texas market, the Austin metro, or your individual situation. The three components of affordability are the price, the mortgage rate, and the household income. Of course, this assumes the purchase is going to be financed. And since the vast majority of buyers, especially first-time buyers, are going to have some type of a mortgage. So for this video, I'm going to assume that your purchase will involve a mortgage. Now, two of these components are very easy to quantify. The price of the house and your household income. But the third part, which is the mortgage rate, can vary depending upon things like your credit score. In some cases, builder incentives or rate buy-downs can lower your interest regardless of other credit factors. But whatever mortgage rate you're able to lock into, we need to be aware that there are other parts of a mortgage payment that are going to influence your monthly payment and the affordability. The first part of your mortgage payment is the principal interest on the loan itself. The second is your homeowner's insurance. Third is your property taxes. And finally, your HOA dues. Now, let me be clear. I am not a licensed mortgage loan officer, so I am not going to talk about the specific rate that you might qualify for or the monthly payment that you might qualify for. Everything I'm going to talk about is readily available on any online mortgage calculator. And my purpose here today is simply to give you some examples that should provide some ideas about things you might want to talk about when you eventually do talk with a mortgage professional. You know I make these videos to provide information to help you make better decisions when you're buying or selling real estate. But the only way I'll know is if you like them or if you find them useful is if you like the video, leave a comment, or subscribe to my channel. Also, if you think about buying or selling real estate here in the Austin area, I would love to help you out. Shoot me a text and email or schedule a phone call on the YouTube channel page. But enough about that. Let's talk about some examples of what can impact your affordability. For a $400,000 loan at 7.5% interest for 30 years, your payment would be $2,797. Now, in addition to that principal interest, your monthly payment is also going to include your homeowner's insurance. Let's estimate $1,200 a year or $100 a month. It's also going to include property taxes. Let's say the house appraises for $400,000 and your tax rate is 2.5%. That would be $10,000 per year or $833 per month. Let's also say your HOA dues are $50 a month. When you add all that together, your estimated payment on that house would be $3,780. So now we've got two pieces of the affordability formula, but what about income? There are many factors that are going to impact your ability to qualify for specific monthly payments, such as your other outstanding debts. But as a very rough estimate, if your household income is about three times the amount of that monthly mortgage payment, you would at least be in the range to begin the conversation with a mortgage professional. So for a payment of $3,780, if your monthly income was around $11,000, you could probably afford this house. And that works out to about $136,000 a year. Now let's look at a couple of different scenarios that are going to impact the affordability using these exact same numbers. Let's say you had $200,000 put down in the house. That would reduce the amount financed to $200,000. And at that same 7.5% interest rate, that $400,000 house becomes affordable for someone with a household income of around $85,000 a year. For our next example, let's say the interest rate was reduced to 5%. Now, this has been happening a lot with new construction because builders are offering financing incentives. The exact same house at 5% interest becomes affordable for someone with a household income of around $112,000 a year. For your specific situation, your household income is going to determine what's affordable for you. And it's the only part of the formula that won't change. You could tell the mortgage officer that you expect to make $200,000 next year, but they're only going to be concerned with what they can verify. In other words, what you have earned in the past. I encourage you to play around with this formula because every other part of it can change. Let's say you adjust your budget and look at homes priced at $350,000 and you have $50,000 to put down. If you got that 5% interest with the builder, your minimum household income would be just shy of $90,000 a year. And don't forget that tax rates can differ. That exact same $350,000 house at a 2% tax rate would reduce your monthly payment to $2,300 a month, which means the minimum income would be around $85,000 a year. I've seen numbers like this down south in Kyle or San Marcos or east to Elgin. Both the cost of the home and the interest rate are a lot lower than what you might expect if you're only looking at median prices and overall averages. 
In this example, someone with a household income in the sixty to seventy thousand dollar range could buy a new construction house in the Austin metro. You would be limited to the number of areas where you could do something like this, but as household income increases, more options become available. Generally speaking, if the household income gets closer to $100,000, you could pretty much look anywhere in the metro area, especially if you're looking at new construction. One thing is clear. If you're financing your home purchase, the interest rate is a critical piece of the affordability formula. You might be convinced that it makes more sense to wait until interest rates come down. But is that something we can realistically expect in the short term, even though there are some positive signs that the Federal Reserve might be done raising interest rates? My question is how long do you think it's going to take before they start lowering those rates? There are a lot of cheerleaders out there who have been predicting that 5% mortgage rates are only a couple of months away, and they've been doing this for nearly two years. But even if mortgage rates did drop to 5% tomorrow, how do you think the market is going to respond to that? Do you really think that if mortgage rates dropped and a substantial number of buyers re-entered the market, that prices are going to continue to stay as low as they are now and builders are going to continue to offer the incentives that they're offering now? If you want to learn more about what we might expect with interest rates and home prices, you might want to check out this video. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell. That way you'll get a notification every time I post a new video.